Hello my fellow gamers and welcome once again to Pedophiles of Widows. Today we are back to Total War 3 Kingdoms with a video about how to beat the AI on its highest difficulty setting. That setting being very hard and on the records mode. I and the AI are going to use the exact same army. I have set up three same generals and each general has the same units. I have chosen some sword units, some spear units, crossbowmen, bows, different kinds of bows and uh, some cavalry and also cavalry of different kinds there. Cavalry units that have shields, no shields, that have swords, that have spears and they all have their uses. I have used mostly cheap starting units because this is what most of you will face when you first start your campaign and play against the AI. But I have also added some of those gold hero units because they have some special abilities and very strong attacks that can be shown to you in this battle. If we take a look at the map, you'll see that I've given the opponent a very nice hill to sit upon. This is because the AI is the defender in this battle and I wanted to show you how to trick the AI even though he is the defender and doesn't have to attack your army, you can actually trick him into attacking your position and uh, for him to uh, abandon his uh, higher elevation and the better position. Now as we jump into the battle, let me just explain my formation. The first group is just sword units with the strategist and experience on the flanks to de defend against the cavalry charges. The third group is the bow units with the weaker bow units with lower range at the forefront while the stronger bow and crossbow unit with the long range are farther back so this way the entire unit in the should I say the entire group is going to attack at the same time when it engages the enemy rather than uh, the back units with their longer range attacking while the front units don't do anything. On each wing I have a general with a very good cavalry unit whose specialty is a melee charge and I also have two units of shield cavalry which are going to be there just to draw the enemy's fire. The AI has taken the formation where the infantry is front of the bows but this might have just been uh, reversed and the bows could have been forward which is uh, the reason why you have to draw the fire with your cavalry units, the shield cavalry units before you engage with your own bows so that you do not lose the advantage while you are setting up that you are getting shot at. This way the enemy shoots at the horses, it cannot get them because they are far and with shields and moving fast but your bow units can get in there and start shooting without getting shot at first. You need to remember that the AI is not an enemy player, he doesn't think as logically as you might, so just giving him an option for his fire at will bow units to shoot at will commit him and therefore if you keep your formation at the middle and just slowly get closer and closer to the enemy's uh, range, then have the cavalry on the flanks take the fire first, you are going to have a clear shot at the enemy's formation without getting shot at first. And you saw here the perfect example as one of my bow units got too close to the range of one of his bow units it got a few volleys shot at it but as soon as the horses the ones that are the greatest danger and the closest of my units to his formation all of the enemy's bow units are going to turn about and start shooting at the running horses. The horses are moving targets, they have shields, they are in loose formation and they are the perfect target for the enemy to waste his arrows. You might lose some horses but the enemy is going to waste a lot of arrows while you are shooting at him with your own units. Let me just rewind this part of Real Kuge. You saw that I went from loose formation to regular formation with my cavalry and I charged them into the sword units here. They are unprotected, they do not have any cavalry or spear support and they are perfect target for a cavalry charge that would do a lot of damage. Because of the constant bombardment from my archers, the enemy sword units constantly try to take the loose formation and keep the low casualties from bows, but that it makes them the perfect target for cavalry charges as loose formation reduces the charger resistance by 100%. Because of the steep hill, my cavalry was too late to take advantage of this, but it was still able to inflict massive damage with their wedge formation into the flanks of the enemy's sword units. Before I go over to the other wing, I quickly attack with the disengaged cavalry and disengage the cavalry that is now attacking. On the other wing, I already set up a retreat towards my spear units, which I am going to use to block off the enemy's cavalry advance because I'm outnumbered at this flank. The trouble is that these units just have halberds, they do not have shields. Shields are good at taking and repulsing charges, but just having spears and also having to run towards the cavalry instead of waiting for the cavalry to strike means that these units are going to take a pounding from that cavalry charge. But as that is not the purpose of this video, I am going to jump over to the main point. The point that you are seeing right now on the screen is that the defender 
the AI is actually the one who is running down his hill and attacking my line of units because I've engaged him so much with my cavalry on the wings and archers in the front that he has decided to actually run towards my army and I do not even have to attack him with my main infantry line even though I am the attacker in this battle, which is the whole point of doing all of this. As you saw a moment ago, once again my cavalry units have charged into his melee line as it was coming down the hill and inflicted massive damage while uh, there are no spear units or cavalry enemy units to stop them. And now as the enemy uh, brings in his own cavalry to charge against my cavalry, I pull them back towards my melee line and this is where I wait for him. But I do not allow his general to strike towards my infantry line because that is a downhill cavalry charge. So I leave my unit of cavalry to block that charge, take some of the hits, but with the help of the sword units it is going to be able to bring down the enemy general. As the battle continues to its conclusion, I'm just going to reiterate on a few key points for this. If you want to make the AI on the very hard difficulty actually attack you even though he's the defender in a battle, the first thing that you have to do in a battle is give him your front line. That is, means that you need your infantry to be at the front and you also need your archers at the front. You can use your cavalry to go onto the flanks and uh, be a target for his archers who are going to turn about, change their direction and that will give your archers time to get into the front ranks because the enemy is standing but you have to walk, meaning that if you're walking towards the enemy he has the upper hand and can shoot at you first by the time you stop and start shooting. This way, by giving him your cavalry as a target and sending that cavalry far into the flanks, you can even draw away some of his cavalry units that might actually drop down on your archers. And now that your archers are in place and are able to shoot at the enemy archers or infantry, whichever is closer to you, now you have the ability to pull back with your cavalry and see about getting some charges into unprotected infantry units or bow units depending on which of those two are at the forefront. And once the enemy general has taken the bait and has started his charge towards you with his infantry, make sure to see if you have any available cavalry to actually do a charge and especially do a charge at an enemy infantry unit who is getting shot at by arrows going into loose formation. A charge into a loose formation of infantry will do double the damage that a charge into a regular formation of infantry will do. But do keep in mind that the AI is really quick because he doesn't have to use a mouse and keyboard, he can give orders simultaneously to all units. Therefore keep uh, looking at that sign for a formation change above the uh, unit icon because if the enemy is going back to the regular formation you might have a tougher nut to crack with your cavalry, you might start going back a little bit, keep shooting at them, see if they go into loose formation again and then try again for the charge. In this video I have covered only how to make the enemy attack your cavalry who is at the flanks, use your archers to get into position while he's doing that and then be able to draw the enemy into attacking you even though he's the defender by attacking with your cavalry on the flanks and shooting with your arrows from the front. There are also other ways to trick the AI which I will cover in my next videos. Thank you all for watching, I will leave you to watch this battle to its conclusion, but do come back for the next uh, video how to trick the AI. And of course if you have any comments of your own about this, I would like to hear it in the comment section. If you have your own ideas how to cheat the AI, I would love to read those. And of course if you have interesting battles that you would like me to do a review of battle or make them into a cinematic, please submit them to my email pedophilosophsubmissions at gmail.com. Once again, thank you all for watching and please stay tuned for more videos.
yourselves.